The final text messages Tyler Skaggs did and also did not respond to took center stage today in the trial surrounding the baseball player's death. Jason Allen spent today in the courtroom for you to bring you inside. Some of the key evidence in this case today, at least, is all this activity on Skaggs' cell phone, it sounds like. Right, Doug, and the court listened to hours of very meticulous questions and answers about how data is pulled out of a cell phone, but that also offered some insight into potentially just how quickly Skaggs died that night in, in June 2019. A forensic al analysis uh, noted that he was always responding very quickly when messages came through on his cell phone, but the night after he got messages prosecutors believe were about pills. Minutes later, he got a message from a teammate, several from his wife, and he never responded to any of those messages. It's a former communications director for the LA Angels, uh, Eric Kay, who's the one facing charges accused of providing the pills to Skaggs. And, and some of them turned out to be counterfeit, made with fentanyl, which contributed to his death. Prosecutors keyed in today on messages that they found in Skaggs' phone that they say are from Kay, particularly this one before the team flew to Texas in 2019. How many was the text from Kay? Skaggs replied, just a few, like five, Word was the response, don't need many, Skaggs set back. Just as important today was the data investigators did not find. There was a deleted message from Instagram. There was a deleted audio message from a phone number. There was some activity on WhatsApp, and Kay's defense team has been asking about that, as well as how investigators secured the phone. Doug, they're suggesting it's possible that pills came from someone else, and Skaggs, or maybe somebody else, while that phone wasn't secured, could have deleted that information. Jason Allen on the trial for us today. Jason, thanks for bringing us inside. North